I noticed that there aren't any videos on Eisenstein's criterion, so I thought I would make one. Uh, so basically what we're doing, we're defining a certain class of polynomial that's meeting these three conditions, and then we're proving that these polynomials cannot be factored into two polynomials of smaller order. So I'm going to work through the proof using a specific polynomial that you see here, and once you see how it works for this polynomial, it'll be easy to see how it works for others as well. Um, I think it's easier to follow the proof if you have some actual numbers to look at here instead of just a bunch of variables. It gets uh, confusing. Um, now this proof relies on prime numbers and in this case we're going to be using the number 5. And the number 5 meets three criteria. First of all, 5 does not divide the coefficient of the largest term of the polynomial. 5 does not divide 2. 5 does divide the coefficients of all of the other terms. It divides 10, 5, and 10. And 5 squared does not divide the smallest term, so 25 does not divide 10. So we want to try to factor this into two polynomials of order x squared or smaller, but it turns out in the proof we're going to need this x to the third term as well, so we'll put that there. So if these two polynomials multiplied by each other give us this one, then if we look at the cross multiplication terms which uh, do not contain an x, uh, those are going to have to multiply to equal 10. So we just have the a and the b. a times b equals 10. And we're going to go ahead and factor this into 2 times 5. So we've already said that 5 divides 10 once. So there's one 5 on this side, but a 5 squared does not divide 10. So we don't have two 5s on this side. So that means either the b or the a is divisible by 5, but not both of them. So we'll arbitrarily choose that the b is going to be divisible by 5. We haven't put any conditions on either side, so we can do that. So so we say that a is not divisible by 5, and we make a new, var a new variable b prime, which is equal to b divided by 5. And we're going to want to keep track of all of these 5s, so we'll go ahead and convert this b here into 5b prime. Now we could say that a times b prime has to equal to the 2 to make the 10, but we really don't care about that. We just want to keep track of the 5s. And in fact, at the end, we're going to prove that this factorization isn't possible. So uh, we don't even need to know what the a and b prime actually are. So, okay, so moving from right to left, we want to look at the uh, terms that can give us an x. So we have uh, cx times 5b prime, and we have a times dx. And this is going to have to equal 5x. So now I'll rearrange this. So I've put the 5 here and the 5b uh, prime c here. So looking at this, we have a, a 5 on this side. So either the a or the d has to be divisible by 5. But we've already said that a is not divisible by 5. So that means the d is divisible by 5. And again, we'll uh, define a new variable. We'll say that um, d prime is equal to d divided by 5. So now we want to look at the terms that can give us an x squared, and you'll see that the pattern is kind of repeating here. Uh, we have the e x squared times 5 b prime. We have the cx and 5 d prime x. And we have the a and the f. And this is going to be equal to 10. So again, we put all the 5s over on the right side. And again, we have a 5 on this side. So one of these two has to be divisible by 5. And again, the a is not divisible by 5. So, And correcting a typo from the original video, we should have f prime is equal to f divided by 5. And we'll put the 5 f prime up here. Okay, now we'll do the x to the third term. So we have uh, gx to the third 
5 b prime. We have e x squared and 5 d prime x. We have c x and 5 f prime x squared. And we have a times h. And this is equal to 2. So now let's group together all the 5s. So if we assume that h is equal to 0, then this term goes away. So now this side is divisible by 5, but this side, the 2, we set up here, is not divisible by 5. So that shows us that h is not equal to 0. So if h is not equal to 0, then this polynomial is order x to the third, and so we were not able to factor our original polynomial into two smaller polynomials. So I've shown the proof for a particular polynomial, but you can see that uh, if we had had a different prime number and a different set of coefficients uh, that met all of these criteria, that the proof would work uh, the same way. The, uh, the first and the last steps would be the same, and then however many intermediate terms you have, you would just get fives here, or uh, whatever your prime number was for however many terms there are in the middle.